Welcome everybody and thank you very much for being here today. I'm very happy to share with you this event, which is a Code Week event. This means that everybody who is taking part in this webinar is really taking part in it, in the sense that this will be an interactive webinar. So all of you will play together in order to try to solve coding readers. And this will happen right now. But in order to interact with me, you need to scan these two QR codes, but not now. So let me make them smaller because I need, first of all, to explain which one of the two QR codes is exactly for you. So let me show you how the game will work. So this is the playground. So basically we'll have a common board where to move two robots, a pink one, which is to the left of the screen and the green one, which is to the right of the screen. So these two pieces will be Robbie, which stays for robot left and Robbie right. So the two teams uh, that will be organized uh, right now will move and be represented by Robbie left and by Robbie right, uh, as I will explain very soon. But we also have a target. This is our target. So this means that you have to bring your robots to the target. To do so, you have these Kodi cards which represents simple movement instructions that you will use to move your robots on the board. But as you see, all the squares, or many of the squares in the board, have a figure in it, because there are readers uh, represented by the figures that you see on the board. And there are four types of readers associated with the four different figures that you find. So there will be Cody Robbie readers. Readers means questions, challenges, quizzes that you have to answer, to solve. So Cody Robbie, Cody Color, Scratch, and Code.org. So moving around on the board, we'll discover readers and the two teams will be challenged to try to solve them. And I'll explain the gameplay in a moment. But first of all, let me explain how you will decide which team to participate with. So assume this is your classroom and you are watching a video as the boys and girls represented in this picture. So. The classroom can be split into two parts, depending on which side of the class you are with respect to the screen. So if you are sit to the left, you will play with the left team. If you are sit to the right, you can play with the right team. And each team can take part in the game by means of a smartphone or tablet. So each team needs to have a mobile device. And the mobile device is the one that you will use to vote, to express the action that your team has to take during the game, OK? So assume that in the classroom you have two smartphones or tablets, then this is the setup. This means that the left team will be asked to scan this QR, this QR code and the right team the other one. But if you have just one device in the classroom, you can decide whether to take part to the left team or to the right team. So it's up to you. Make your choice and uh, the entire classroom uh, will uh, cooperate uh, and express just one vote for one of the two teams. If, on the other hand, you have uh, three or more devices, uh, then you can organize the classroom in small groups, like 
in this case, and each group can decide whether to stay with the left or with the right team, like in this example. Okay? Good. Now, I assume that each of you knows whether to play with the left or with the right team, and it's the time to start scanning the QR codes. So let me just uh, show the left uh, team QR code. So right now I'm uh, asking uh, all people who is playing with the left team to scan this QR code. When you scan it, you will uh, just uh, find the landing page waiting for a reader, waiting for a question. So there are no questions, but as soon as a question will be posed, then will be asked, then the question will appear on your screen uh, and you will uh, be ready to vote, to provide your answer. Okay, now it's the turn of the right team. So please, right team, scan this QR code now. Notice that if the QR code scanner doesn't work, you can directly type the URL that you find here for the right team and this one for the left team. Okay? Here I am. <laughs> okay, done. Let me just uh, show both of them for a little while, because the first question uh, that I will uh, ask you is to count the people in your team. So please provide an answer saying uh, how many people are in your group. So how many people uh, will vote with a single mobile device? So let's see for the left and right people, uh, teams, sorry, how many groups and how many people in each group there are. So it's amazing uh, to see how many people are uh, taking part in this activity. Because you see, each vote is just a group. And for instance, if we see that there are, uh, let's assume, let's take this number, 75 uh, groups of 20 people for the right team, this means uh, that each team is composed by thousands of people. So that's amazing. Uh, and I, I hope that you feel the thrill of taking part in something so big and uh, trying to do something together with so many people uh, from different countries. Wow. I am very happy to see these bars, not only because uh, you are so many, but also because you are so well balanced, because you see that the numbers are almost the same in the two teams. That's amazing. So the splitting into two teams uh, has worked very, very well. Okay, so thank you very much. While you keep uh, answering, uh, I keep explaining. So let me just uh, reduce the size of these uh, two graphs and move forward. Okay, in order to explain the game dynamics, uh, I have to introduce uh, the Kodi cards that we will be using. So those are very, very simple ways of representing movement instructions. The first one is uh, this one, which uh, stays for move forward. And move forward will be represented by an F hereafter, move forward, so letter F and green card, which produces this effect on Robby. You see, from year to year. Then we have yellow cards representing third left instruction. And uh, the short name of these instructions will be L. And the effect is this one. You see, Robby just turns 90 degrees counterclockwise, so to its left, as in this example. Then we have another move forward in our example 
that produces this effect. And then the red card. Red card stays for turn right, represented by letter R. And the effect of this instruction is this one. And now, if we have another card, which is a move forward card, the effect will be this one. OK, if we put all these cards in sequence, uh, we obtain uh, this effect. You see, move forward, turn left, move forward, turn right, move forward. So we will uh, end up moving our robot from ear to ear just by making it executing this sequence of instructions. The short names for them will be F, L, F, R, F. OK? Good. I think that now we are ready to switch to the dynamic playground, which has been implemented in Scratch, so that after this webinar, you will be able to also look at the code of this, uh, of this game, which is called the Cody game. And here it is. And here we are. So as any Scratch project, uh, I can uh, activate it by pressing uh, the green flag. And let me just uh, show how it works. When I click on uh, the start bottom here, then I take uh, at random three cards from uh, this, um, uh, from this uh, deck. And uh, assume that I'm playing for the um, left team now, and that the left team decides to move its robot. Notice that your uh, um, aim is to uh, get to the target. So the team who reaches the target first wins the game. OK, so be careful. In order to move, your robot, you have to use these cards. And you have to use all of them, but you can decide the order. So for instance, if we start from here, I could make these movements. Turn left, move forward, turn right. OK? And this is one turn. But since at this point, uh, the robot uh, stopped on a square with a figure, and the figure represents Cody Robbie, then I will uh, challenge both teams. I will ask a question based on Cody Robbie. And in order to keep the turn, the two teams uh, have to answer this question. To answer this question, you have to be very, very careful because the team who provides the right question with the higher percentage of votes wins. This means that the turn will be to the team who provided the correct answers with the higher percentage. OK? Assume that the turn goes to the other team, then we take three new cards from the deck and we use them to move the right robot, the green one. And in this case, we could do this kind of movements. But I need to show you something else before starting playing the game. Because assume that the next turn uh, is still the turn of the green team, just because it was the green team to provide the correct answer to the reader. I take three more cards. And at this point, uh, I can decide whether to move the robot, the green robot, or to move the target. Because the cards can be applied to the target as well. And at each turn, the team has to tell me whether he <clears throat> wants to play by moving the robot or the target. So if I apply the movements to the target, see what happens. And exactly as it happens for the robot, uh, if the target stops on a uh, um, square with a um, challenge, then the two teams uh, will be challenged. OK, now time to play. But 
before starting, uh, I need uh, to double check uh, how many people uh, are in the teams. So let me just uh, show you this, which is amazing. You see? Great. And now we are ready to start. And um, the first turn will be for the left team. Because uh, um, I think that there are a little bit less people in the left team, so I decide to um, grant them the first turn in the game. So let's stop this and take the cards from the deck. Here you are. So, left team, first of all, we need to ask you a question, which is, uh, not this one. Uh, no, no, not this one, sorry. No, no, we need to ask you another question, which is, um, okay, so the question is, uh, Saverio, uh, who is uh, helping me managing uh, the right team uh, as to type it together with me. And the question is, uh, target or robot? Because uh, you need to decide. Okay. Uh, then save poll. Okay. And then click on it. And this has to be asked just to the left team. Okay? Okay, so left team, based on the cards that you have, you can decide whether you want to move your robot or to move your target. Okay, speaking about strategy, at this time, as you see, the two robots start from the same place. So it is very, very appropriate to decide to move the robot because if you decide to move the target, you end up doing something not only for your team, but also for the other team. Because if you make the uh, target move closer to your robot, you end up also moving it closer to the other team's robot. So good choice. So this means that the cards will apply to the, to the robot. Okay, let's stop because uh, it's very clear what you want to do as a move. And now I have to ask you in which order you want to move your, to play your cards. So let me tell you which are the options. So this will be asked in a question that I will uh, uh, write here. So which move? And uh, the options are forward, forward, left, F, F, L, or forward, left, forward, which is F, L, F, or left, forward, forward. It's nice that at this point, starting from here, all these options are valid. So save poll and ready to ask you. Notice that uh, if you take uh, each of the three choices, bring, uh, will bring your robot uh, on a different position, and uh, this means uh, that you will find uh, a different reader. Either scratch, Cody color, or nothing. Because those are the three positions uh, where you can bring your robot. If you make a left turn, and then forward, forward, you will stop here. So forward, forward, left means that you are choosing to play with scratch. OK, let's make the moves. Here we are. OK, now I remove the scratch icon from here and I have to challenge you with Scratch. 
Okay, so this is Scratch. You probably know it, but it's uh, a very nice uh, um, block-based visual programming environment which allows you to make games or projects of any kind. In this case, I will use it just to um, move the scratch cat. And notice that uh, to move it, uh, I have move instructions like this. So you see, each one of these instructions provide an effect. Move 10 steps is the effect that I'm providing. Let me just uh, make it bigger so that you can see it. And uh, what I'd like uh, to do now is to ask you which is the effect of the um, code that I'm going to write. Let's see. So, um, repeat four times. Move. 50 steps. And this is the question, because right now it's too simple, but I also add this, which is turn 60 degrees to the left. Oh, let me make it different. I'd like to ask you this question. OK, so the cat will move 50 steps forward and then turn of 60, 60 degrees to the left. OK, the question is, and this will be asked to both teams. So please, right team, notice that you need to provide the correct answer to this question in order to uh, win this riddle and be allowed to move at the next turn because if the left team provides more uh, correct answers than you then the left team will play in the next turn as well so the question is which figure will be drawn by the cat Square, triangle, pentagon, nothing. So nothing means uh, none of the above. Okay, but before asking the questions, I have also to tell the scratch cat to put down the pen who he's bringing with him. Because the cat is always bringing with him a pen, so that if he put the pen down when he moves, so he end up drawing something on the um, stage uh, where it moves. So let's see what happens. So save Paul and uh, ready to ask you the questions. Oh, uh, Saverio, make sure that uh, uh, you select uh, show results in percentage. This is very important because uh, we to make uh, the results comparable, we need to... Um, we need, uh, and then uh, save Paul again, we need uh, to look at the percentage because the number of uh, people is different. So square, triangle, pentagon, nothing. Okay, so the two teams uh, are saying uh, that uh, the scratch cat uh, is drawing a triangle. Hmm, I'm not sure. 
So please look also at the percentages of the other answers because we need to double check by running this code what's the effect of the code. And in case it is, for instance, a square, then the left team will win just because of the higher percentage of correct answers. In case it is a triangle, at this time, the right team would win. In case it is a pentagon, in this, at this time, the left team will win. OK, let's stop it now. But I, I just uh, take a snapshot uh, of the percentages to see what happens. So at this time, and let's run. You see, this is not a triangle. Because to make it a triangle, so the left, the, sorry, the right team is winning. Right now, the percentages are exactly the same. But when I uh, took the snapshot, uh, the right team uh, provided the right answer, which is nothing uh, with a higher percentage. Um, so to make it a triangle, I would have, oh, sorry, <laughs> I would have. Um, needed to make it turn of 120 degrees. Look at this. So I have to clean it up. And here it is. This is a triangle, you see. OK, so good for the right team. And uh, right now, so we switch to the right team and we take three more cards from the deck. Here we are. So right team. <laughs> now you can choose, first of all, whether to play. Uh, so we need to reset the poll. OK. And uh, you can decide whether to play by moving your robot or by moving the target. Please look at the cards. Look at the cards because you have a right turn and you have to use all of them. So I'd like just to mention that if you move the green robot, there is only one way of using the um, turn right card, which is at the end, because I cannot turn right and then move forward. While if I decide to move the target, then I could turn right and move forward. OK? But you are choosing to, um, to move the robot. So please, let's do it. OK? So we can stop this. Uh, poll because uh, you took your choice and right now the only option that you have is moving forward moving forward and turning right so we don't need to ask you because you already took your decision because by deciding to move your robot using these cards and reminding uh, that uh, you need to use all of them the only way of using all of them is this one move forward move forward and turn right okay since right now there are no more readers uh, on this square because the only one that was there is already um, has already been used now the turn goes to the left team without any reader. So let me take uh, three more cards. OK, the, those are the cards that the left team has to use. And uh, once again, you have to decide whether to use, uh, to move, sorry, the target or to move your robot. So let me ask you the question. Here it is. Target or robot? Left team. Robot. OK, it makes sense. All 
Okay, I think that uh, we are collecting enough uh, answers uh, to consider it uh, as decided. Okay, so next question is how to play. So this means that uh, I have to give you the possible uh, choices, which are forward, forward, right, forward, right, forward, right, forward, forward, because uh, all of them are available for you. So it's up to you to decide how to play with these cards. Here it is. Forward, forward, right. Okay. Hmm. I know why you took this choice. In order not to find a reader hmm, on your path. But notice that if you don't find a reader, then the turn will go automatically to the other team. So I appreciate your choice because it makes it uh, simpler for me to uh, conduct the game, but I'm not sure that this is the best choice possible. Okay, let me implement these movements. So forward, forward, right and the turn goes to the right team and those are the cards hmm i think those are pretty good cards for the right team okay so now the question is for the right team do you prefer to move your robot or to move the target please look very carefully at the cards that you have in hands and uh, tell me whether you prefer to move the target or the robot. <coughs> okay. I think that the decision is taken. Okay, good. Let's go ahead. And um, now you have to decide how to use them. So let's stop this, Saverio, and please implement the question, which is uh, which move and the uh, Possible moves are left, forward, left, or left, left, forward. Notice that there are no other ways of playing with these cards because you cannot start with the move forward step because in this case, you will fall outside the board. And notice that falling outside the board in a normal game would uh, cause the game to lose the, the team sorry to lose but in this case i'm forcing it uh, by uh, proposing only options which are viable okay please okay so notice that uh, if we decide to uh, play left forward left then you will lose the turn because uh, there will be no reader if you decide to turn left left and move forward as you are saying so let me do it for you left left forward you find a reader based on code.org so you have a chance of keeping the turn in your hands good move okay Let's go to code.org then. Okay, so I would like to ask you something based on code.org. In code.org, we use this simple paradigm, these simple instructions to move Angry Bird towards the green pig. And notice that if I have as in this case, uh, just uh, let me make it uh, a little bigger. Okay. 
So, as in this case, uh, if I have just uh, uh, a, oh, sorry, this is in Italian, this is unfair. <laughs> okay, here we are. Okay, so when I press run, if I have just uh, one instruction like move forward, then look at the effect. Here is the effect, okay? But now, I'm adding additional instructions and the questions that we will uh, ask you at the end is uh, whether the instructions, so the code that I'm writing uh, is correct or not. So it's a code which will uh, solve this puzzle or not. So move forward, then Turn left, turn right, and move forward. So the question is, how are you posing it, uh, Saverio, so that I do it the same the same way? Okay, it's up to me. Okay, is it correct? Yes or no? Let's save the poll. Okay, so, uh, and sorry, we have to set it uh, in percentage. Um, here we are. Okay, ready, go. So notice that both teams... Uh, ...have to provide their answers. It's not correct. Hmm. So do you think I'm wrong? Not happy. Move forward, turn left, turn right, move forward. Seems good. Okay. Five more seconds, four, three, two, one. So at this time, 75% of the um, left team said that uh, the code wouldn't work and about 72% of the right team. Let's see if it works. Oh, damn. There is a bug. There is a bug. And you know where the bug uh, is? Here. I forgot a move forward. So the left team wins this riddle. Congratulations. So we can go back to our game and uh, allow the left team to play. Okay. So those are your cards. Wow. Very nice cards, very nice cards. Okay, so let's see if you prefer to use them to move the target or, oh, sorry, I have to reset the pole, to move the target or to move the robot. Okay, I think that you are right. I would have moved the robot as well. So let's decide how to move the robot. So now the options are... Let's see. Um, basically, uh, all possible moves are allowed because you can decide to do uh, it this way. Forward, forward, left or forward, left, forward, or left, forward, forward. Ok, 
Okay, let's see. Forward, forward left is prevailing and uh, it makes a lot of sense. So let's do it for you. Forward, forward, left. Okay, so we go back to scratch. Let me remove the scratch icon uh, from the board and let's go back to scratch. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Here we are. Now, uh, we made the scratch cut draw a triangle, but right now I would like to do something different, like this. Oh, sorry, pen down is always good, and also clear is always good, but now I would like to do it in this way. Mm. Okay. And, oh, hmm. no, that's fine. Let me do something different. <laughs> Move number of steps or ninety degrees. Hmm. Okay. So I'm just uh, curious to ask you whether or not in this case uh, a geometric figure will appear on the screen. So, let's see what you think. And let me find... Okay, I think that the question can be the same as before. So, which figure will be drawn by the cat? Please. Wow. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the percentages because uh, those will be fundamental. I'm oh, sorry, I'm hiding the code, which is not good. Okay. So 75% uh, um, of the right team 76 at this time is voting for a square, while 70, almost 78% of the left team is voting for a square. So if it is a square, then the left team will uh, win this reader. So five more seconds, four, three, two, one. Okay, 79 against 76. Let's see what happens. Ho oh, ho, this is a square. Hmm. This means that the left team keeps the game in his hands. <laughs> they have a great opportunity of winning this game but let's see how they want to take this chance so i need to reset the poll to ask whether you prefer to move your robot or the target Okay, it is apparent that you prefer to move the robot, so I can stop it. And uh, I can ask you, how do you want to play with your cards? But right now, instead of just uh, proposing the proper answer, 
I propose also the wrong ones. So the ones leading your robot out of the board. And be careful. If you end up choosing a wrong move, then you lose the game. While if you end up making the proper choice, you'll win. And I think that uh, since uh, there's a risk to be the last turn in the game, I provided the opportunity to the right team to suggest the move to the left team. So this question will be asked to both teams, to the left one and to the right one. And the right team can suggest the proper move or the wrong move in order to try to make the left team fail. Be very careful. So, which move will be asked to both the teams? But only the pink robot will be moved based on the choice of the left team. But the left team can look at the suggestions of the right team to make their choice. So, the um, options are forward, right, forward right forward forward or forward forward right okay let's save the poll and make sure that it is expressed in person no in percentage we don't need it those are just suggestions so three two one go okay I'm very curious to see the suggestions that the right team provides to the left team. Left team, please look at the suggestions from the right team. And left team, those are your answers. Okay, I think that it's time to, yes, to consider the decision taken. And uh, so, move forward, move forward, and turn right. Uh, congratulations to the left team. Uh, so, the left team won. The left team won, but by playing this game, we didn't find two of the possible types of readers, which were Cody Robbie and Cody Color. So, since we finished very soon, because the, the game was played in a very effective way, and notice that this also depending on the fact that the um, on the fact that the cards um, were very useful to both teams to play, because sometimes the cards are not so fortunate. So. <clears throat> I would like to show you something else and to ask you another question based on Cody Color, which is this game here. So Cody Color works in this way. Notice that we have a, um, a board with colorful tiles. And see what happens. I can decide to... Uh, place uh, the robot uh, at the border in any place here. And what the, the robot does is stepping into a tile and deciding based on the color whether to just go straight if the color is, is uh, gray or to turn left if the color is uh, yellow or to turn right uh, if the color is red. So let's see what happens uh, if uh, uh, I make it start from here.
<laughs> you see, it's quite difficult to foresee the exit point. So that's the challenge. So what I will uh, ask you is based on this distribution of colors and of the entry point of Robby, which will be the exit point. So Saverio, please um, help me in setting a question. I'll do it for the left team. So um, which position is the question? And we have to put uh, capital A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, N, O, P, Q, oops, <laughs> R, S, D, U, V. Okay, save poll. Okay, before asking the question, I need uh, to uh, oh put it in percentage. I always forget. Okay, let me find uh, a nice place uh, where to start. Mm. Okay, let's start from here. Saverio, are you ready? Okay, go. Okay, you have to try to find the, the position where Robbie will arrive by following these simple rules. <laughs> okay, not easy, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so let me see. The most voted transfer is S for the left team, and it is S also for the right team. So let's wait five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. So 31 against 30. So left team 31 and 30. So let's see if it is the right answer. Oh, oh, so the right answer was letter O. And O was voted by 14% of the left and 18, 19 right now of the right. So the right team wins uh, this riddle and i'm happy because uh, the left team uh, won the Cody game so i'm very happy to see that uh, the right team uh, um, won this uh, riddle here but right now let me do something else i reset this board and i add colors in it so Let's see what happens from here. I would like to ask you now the same question. So please reset the poll, Saverio. And be ready to ask it again. So the exit point which is the exit point starting from here. Go.
Okay, I see that most uh, of you are uh, still voting for letter S. So letter S is uh, very appreciated by both teams, probably because it is the starting point uh, and you assume that it will uh, end up exiting from the same point, but it's not necessarily true. While there are a lot of answers for letter P, 23% of the left team and 23% of the right team. Okay. So, five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. 24 to the left and 23 to the right. 25, 22. Okay. So, let's see what happens. Look at how strange is the path. You see? Okay, so letter P was the answer, and it was not easy at all to provide this answer. So uh, congratulations to the left team, uh, and congratulations to all of the people uh, in both teams uh, who provided the right answer. So I'd like also to show something else uh, of this uh, of this tool here, this simple uh, scratch project, because we could make uh, also it dynamic without asking any questions. So I could uh, start, and then I could change something. And in this way, what happens uh, is that uh, Robbie will be trapped in a loop. So it will never exit right now. And if I add, for instance, a yellow here, then you see, the path will change. So that I can remove those two because they are not used anymore. But I can keep changing it by extending the loop and uh, I can keep changing it and changing the loop. So you see, I can play with what is called uh, usually pixel art, uh, but making uh, it in such a way that it is uh, not only nice to see, but also meaningful for uh, Robbie in order to make it uh, stay in a loop uh, forever. And if I want to make uh, it exit from the loop, then I can change something at some point. So for instance, I can do this. Ciao, ciao, Robby. <laughs> OK, that's it. So uh, I think that also our time together is finished, because uh, this webinar was assumed to last for more or less one hour. And uh, this is the case. So thank you very much for uh, having uh, participated to this uh, experiment because uh, we, uh, I think that uh, you were at least 10,000 people playing together today. And that's amazing. That's really, really, really amazing. Uh, I, I hope that you could feel the thrill, the emotion uh, provided by the bars uh, appearing on my screen. Because uh, each time uh, one of these bars moved, uh, a team in a classroom uh, in Europe uh, was uh, expressing a vote, was uh, trying to participate, to cooperate, uh, and to compete with the other team to win uh, a coding game. So it was uh, really, really, really amazing. And I'm uh, very happy and grateful uh, that uh, you made it. So please uh, remind that uh, all the teachers who facilitated uh, and uh, made it possible for their pupils, their students uh, to participate uh, can add uh, this experience uh, as an activity to the map of Code Week in order to win their own certificates of recognition for having contributed to the success of Code Week. So thank you very much and enjoy Europe Code Week and enjoy coding. Bye bye.